What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arm. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arm. Church, I'm leaning. The church that I remember, it was erected in 1911. We served in that church until 1974 when we built our first church, and I joined the church that was erected in 1911 at the age of nine. There was a lot of changes because I can remember uh, not having inside facilities, but we were always blessed, and I remember there was a big celebration when we put the restrooms inside, the choir room, uh, and the most important thing was the fact that we did not have a baptismal. And when I joined at the age of nine, I had to go to Washington Tabernacle to be baptized, to serve under pastors for 10, 20, and almost 25 years. is just, just a blessing to, to be a part of. I, I, I just love the Lord. And it makes it easy to do that when you have a wife by your side that's motivating you and uh, telling you that, you know, we got to go, you know, irregardless to what, what happened. But it's, it's such a joy. When we first came here, we were looking for, you know, an African-American church and found a uh, person who had grown up with me in Kansas City, Kansas, uh, Reverend Vic Williams, who actually had belonged to this church at one time. And he and his wife, Joyce, were telling us about this black church behind the Chesterfield Mall. I said, oh, I didn't believe him at first. When we got to the church, it was a little old, small brown church by the side of the road. It was, it was a structure that held about 90 members. And I mean, you had to really run to get to church. In other words, if you didn't attend Sunday school, forget about coming to church because we were that crowded. We were a tight church. Everybody knew one another. Uh, it was, all, it was it's, uh, basically known as that small church by the side of the road. Man, I tell you, it was unbelievable. We walked in that church and all these wonderful black people were there. And the men's choir was full of men. We would later find out men play a crucial role in this church. They always have. So my wife and my daughter, we all came and uh, we just loved it. We had Sunday school here, we had church. We always had some meetings here and it was just like having a family here. It was actually part of our life because we were brand new to, to the St. Louis area. This is the fifth church. There were two log cabin churches. There was a white church by the side of the road, and there's a brown church that we came to, and then this is the last one. A lot of fellowship, we did a lot of fellowshipping, uh, but we also had a real strong uh, centralist belief that Christ was guiding us to a bigger and better mission. It really attracted a lot of people from, actually all over St. Louis. We did a demographic study of our church, and people come from everywhere. So we have just seen the church grow by leaps and bounds. Moving into here, it was a sense of awe that we could come from those beginnings and to move into a church of this size and knowing what the potential would be for us reaching out and getting people to come and to serve Christ. It's been a long, long journey, but Jesus been right there by my side. It's been a long The old church and the cemetery sat on less than an acre of ground, if you, could, if you can think that most houses have an acre. So it was a point that we could not uh, get rid of the cemetery, but we had to sell that old little church. So a lot of the prospects that we had weren't willing to buy the church without doing something with the cemetery, but they couldn't do anything with the cemetery. 
So Sachs Properties, and particularly Lewis Sachs, he said, I've got a solution for you guys. Keep the cemetery and I will purchase the church. And he purchased a church and gave us real good seed money to begin to build the church that you're in right now. But some of those graves go back to the 1840s. Uh, that's where people got, got buried when they were, were attending here at this church. Uh, we decided to maintain the cemetery. We did some upgrades to it. We added a meditation center that people could come there and just sit and meditate on their loved ones or just come and meditate, period. So that had a special place for us. And John Madison, if you go out there right now, there's a plaque that sits on either, either side of that cemetery entrance. That was uh, formulated by John Madison, written by John Madison. And of course, with the help of Saks Properties, again, it was made into a bronze plate. And that kind of gives you a history of our cemetery and also a sentiment that's there that basically talks about the people and what all went into that cemetery and how dear and near it is to us as a congregation. Uh, that will always be a part of us because a lot, part of our souls, a part of our heritage is buried in that place. The cemetery will always has a special meaning to me because uh, so many of my relatives, their mother, father, grandparents, and, and so it, it, it's always wonderful just to think that we can look back and see some of the people, tombstones um, that date back over the time that the slavery was here. Family, he kept you so you won't let go. No matter what you're going through, don't let go. No matter what's before you, don't let go. No matter what's behind you, don't let go. No matter what's around you, don't let go. Because the same God that kept you yesterday is the God that's keeping you today. The same God's going to keep you tomorrow. Why? Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's a keeper. We uh, came back to St. Louis after I separated from the Navy in 2001. Um, and, and my mother-in-law actually recommended that we come to First Baptist because there was a new pastor. And uh, I was set on going back to my home church, uh, but I came out and I, I listened, I enjoyed worship. And to the point that for eight months, we actually attended two services each Sunday. We would come here at 945, I would leave uh, here, fly down 40 to 270 to 70, and go to my home church. Uh, I did that for eight months. And finally, um, on October 21st, 2001, the Lord rest upon our heart that day to, to join First Baptist. We experienced the warmth uh, of the people uh, and the warmth of the Word of God. And, and beyond, that was impressive enough the first time we visited. What really almost sealed the deal that day was by the time we had left the church, uh, I told you I went to uh, the service, had then it got back home, there was a package at my front door uh, left by, uh, at that time, Sister Kathy Flowers. She used to be over at Evangelism min uh, Ministry. But it was a welcome packet and a recording of that day's worship. And for a first time visitor, that was very impressive. Uh, so it, it, it spoke to the intentionality of First Baptist Chesterfield when it comes to our commitment to truly equip souls for Christian service. Good morning, FBCC. If you're visiting with us for the first time, please stand and remain standing until Usher has given you a guest card. On behalf of our pastor, Dr. T.D. Stubblefield, our ministers, deacons, and our entire church family, we welcome you. We are a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church that is dedicated to equipping souls for Christian service. If you are currently without a church home, we ask that you prayerfully consider the First Baptist Church of Chesterfield. Thank you. We just thank God that my wife, Velma Favors, and our daughter, Leticia, that we'd be able to find this church 
a lot of our friends are here. Uh, a lot of the activities that we do come from this church. And I'm just so grateful to be here. It's been, it's been the rock, really, of, our, of, of being in, in Chesterfield in the St. Louis area. Because I know that I have people that know me for this, these many years. You can call on people. And there's a lot of love here. So I, I thank God for bringing us here. It makes me feel good that this church has gone through so much and I get to be a part of it. Um, from like the beginning to now, I feel really good about that, that I could be a part of this amazing church. For years, we've been learning with Minister Bloodso and Deacon Mark Clark how to be the church of the future that Christ wants us to be. And I know I wasn't there 175 years ago, but it's amazing to me how God has kept us this strong for this long and now I'm a part of it. I look forward to experiencing how God will use us to impact the church of tomorrow. We've been here since about 2004, 2005-ish time frame, so about 15 or so years. I've always enjoyed working with the youth because I like that interaction, that, that engagement, that feedback that we get. So uh, it was a natural, I guess, progression for me to take this role. and been doing it for about the past two, three years now. I like taking scripture and making it plain to the youth and getting their reaction and kind of let them wrestle with it because I share with them that uh, the scripture, it applies across all ages, across all generations, all times, all epochs. And there's nothing they can ask that scripture hasn't covered. To be a part of the church of a church that's celebrating 175 years in history is rich uh, to me. Uh, it's legacy. Uh, what it says is that there were uh, our founders who toiled and literally slaved that we could not just erect a church, not just uh, worship together, but whether they walk to worship, um, no matter what obstacles faced them that week, they intentionally found themselves in a, in a place of worship. And we have responsibility uh, to toil just as hard. And while our um, obstacles are different today, uh, we still have responsibility to ensure that we rightfully stand on the shoulders of those who have come before us. And what I mean by that is, yes, we stand on their shoulders, but we got a responsibility to represent the way they did and to carry it further because we have even more opportunity today to, to be impactful in our community. So when we talk about more, mercy, opportunity, restoration, endurance, that is a blessing God has given us, but we have responsibility and a reason to faithfully walk through it because of the blessings God rests upon us. There's always been an underlying feeling that we're something special, that uh, God didn't put us here in West County, one of the more fluent counties, not only in the county, but in the state of Missouri. And he left us here. He left this black church, which was formerly founded by slaves, and he let us flourish. And he let us flourish with a with a with a with a with a, a, a mission that we're something special. We're his people and we're going to continue to be his people as long as we do what saved the Lord. What I would like to see for the future of our church is to continue to, you know, grow in spirit, grace and, you know, knowing the knowing the Bible and that for we would like other people to come and join our church. And I'd like to see uh, maybe there are other programs that we can get involved with. And I'd like to see them involve the youth and younger members because we need all that, all that uh, experience and vision. And that, that's how we grow. Now, I'm, I am <clears throat> one of the older members. So I'm looking back and we need younger people to look forward. Where we are today speaks to um, our intentionality about continuity, 
about making sure that we are plugged into each other as we plug into God. I believe that it represents or shows that the God covers all, he sees all, he has sustained us even in this season. And if we truly follow his way, his will, his word, we'll always end up at that place that he desires us to be. Uh, this is not uh, of, of our works. This is of our, his will and us faithfully walking in his will. So it's a, a blessing, it's an honor just to be a part of what's happening. Um, and when we don't know what to do or where to go, we know that the source in which we are all connected to and, and, and that we serve will always lead and always guide us. And so that has not become a question in terms of what do we do, where do we go? Follow the Lord. And as, as you follow him, he will see it to completion. Moving forward, Bobby, that's that's one of the things that I, I cherish is that people like you and, and, and your children and the people that come behind us still have that same fervor and that same mission to say we're going to move forward in faith. I just look forward to seeing the church continue to progress. God never changes and he has promised, you know, that he he's there for us and that's our strength. God's guidance, we'll be able to do it, and we need to do it. That we must go into the future and think about those who will come after us. a happy time and hear shouting, singing, and praying. And this has really meant a lot to me. With God help, I ain't no telling what we could do in this era of Chesterfield. And if we had the facility where we could reach out and had the facility to bring people's in. And this is what God wants. But when we do what does said the Lord, then he'll do the rest.